Science fiction has become reality at the University of Southampton. A group of scientists, engineers and clinicians are designing technologies to improve arm and hand function. And their work is already changing the lives of patients. There are many reasons why people lose the ability to use their arm and hand. Sometimes it follows a stroke, or it's the result of disease such as arthritis. Or it could be due to an injury or loss of limb. Not being able to use your arm and hand makes doing everyday things like dressing or using a computer difficult, if not impossible. But more than that, we use our hands to express ourselves. A patient some time ago who had had a stroke said to me, I knew I was getting better because I found that I was talking with my hands. These psychosocial factors are important too, and much of our work is directed towards these more subtle aspects of rehabilitation. The ARM research team is interested in how the brain recovers following a stroke and whether using technologies such as robots and brain stimulation can improve or speed up recovery. Magnetic pulses activate the cells in the brain causing a muscle contraction. The ratio between the strength of the pulses and the size of the muscle contraction indicates how strong the connections are between them. As a person recovers movement, the connections become stronger. Testing people who've had a stroke may enable therapists to predict who's likely to respond well to intensive treatment. Using robots is an exciting new therapy. Not only does it help people to get a better recovery, but may also save the health service money, because people can use robots without the help of a therapist. Government-funded research has enabled us to develop a new type of robot therapy that combines electrical stimulation of the muscles with playing computer games. Iterative Learning Control adjusts the stimulation applied to patients' muscles in order to help them achieve a tracking task. It changes both the intensity and the timing of the stimulation, and when they're achieving the task well, it reduces the amount of stimulation in order to encourage their own voluntary effort. I write the algorithms to do that, but I work very closely with the clinical members of the team to make sure it works with patients and it's what they need. The team at Southampton are the first people in the world to apply this technique, and their results are very promising. The small number of patients have not only shown improvement, they've also described how much they enjoy it. Involving patients, their families and therapists is one of the basic principles of ARM. Even the most promising technologies aren't going to work if people don't want to or can't use them. So we ask patients, their families and friends, what they think of our devices. Are they easy to use? How can we improve them? What do they feel like when they're using them? We've used this technique really successfully with people with stroke to develop haptic technologies which can help people to feel sensations in virtual reality environments and to generate sensations that might help improve their sensation after stroke. Arm research is not just about people who've had a stroke. Arm research covers all aspects of upper limb function, from understanding arthritic conditions and ways of correcting finger deformity to designing prosthetic devices. Working with children with limb loss and understanding their views and involving them in the design process has led us to developing task-specific upper limb prosthesis that have been informed by the views of the children themselves. Technology is undoubtedly going to become very important, but our aim is to find ways in which people can use it at home. A few years ago, researchers in the States found that if patients put their unaffected hand in a bag, it encouraged them to use their affected hand. When this was combined with intensive exercises, they got quite remarkable improvement. The problem, though, is that patients are not motivated to do it. So we decided to take a slightly different approach. We're designing a web-based program called LifeSit that motivates people to stick at the regime. It helps them to set themselves targets each day and provides them with feedback on their progress. So it's very important to us that our research gets out of the laboratory and one of our aims is to provide better tools for therapists so that they can make more informed decisions about patient treatment and measure more accurately whether it's been effective. This device is a first step towards that. While the hand is moved to follow the lights, it accurately records the movement, 
shows how strong or stiff the muscles are, and EMG signals show how they're working. Using this information, the therapist can decide on treatment and measure how effective it is. It also enables a better understanding of the basic mechanisms associated with loss and recovery of arm and hand function following a stroke. The ARM research team design and test new technologies by working very closely with the very people who will be using them. Patients, their families, the therapists and the companies who will manufacture and sell them. Fundamental to this is understanding how technologies work and developing a better understanding of the way the brain recovers and how people move.